Hello, and welcome to Health and Fitness Redefined. I'm your host, Anthony Amen. Join me today as we take a dive into the world of health and fitness, where we learn how to overcome adversity, depict fact versus fiction, and see health and fitness in a whole new light. Today, we have not one, but two amazing guests. We have to welcome to the show, James and Chris from Our Gym Buddy. We are going to have an amazing time talking all about their passion for working out. I want to learn all about Our Gym Buddy. We're going to learn about how they met. It's an awesome story, guys. So let's get them on here. Welcome to the show, guys. Anthony, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So just a quick uh, homework for the audience. Who's James and who's Chris? So uh, I'm James. I'm Chris. Welcome, guys. So who wants to start and just tell us how you guys met, how the backstory for our gym buddy, and then talk about what is our gym buddy, and we'll kind of take it from there. I'm stuck. You want to do this? I got it. All right, cool, cool. All right, so we both met in the Army. Uh, we went to Air- Airborne School, and that is in Fort Benning, Georgia. Um, I went in February. It was after the Super Bowl, so it was really cold in the morning. Uh, I had no idea it even got cold in Georgia because I'm from Michigan, and he's from Florida, so I'm sure it was really, really cold for him. But we met over there um, in pursuit of being uh, paratroopers. I actually did it to get out of going to Fort Drum in New York because I don't like the cold. Um, so yeah, so we went there, we graduated our, our course, and then it just so happened to be that we both got stationed in Germany. Like the odds of that, so weird. Oh, and we're both Libras as well, so that works for us. Um, yeah, so we were in Germany. Uh, we ended up deploying together to Afghanistan, came back. Um, his tour was a little bit shorter in Germany because he was needed elsewhere. Um, I did my three years, and then I went to Fort Campbell after that. And then, yeah, we pretty much got out of the military. We were trying to find out, like, what to do once we got out. He went to Lockheed Martin. I went to go pursue pro wrestling, and I was uh, studying business marketing. And then uh, the COVID happened. And then one day he, he just told me, he, yeah, and then, uh, tell me so, that part. And then uh, our gym buddy came about there in COVID. Uh, we were both talking on the phone, like keeping in contact. We wanted to start business with something. And science used to be a trainer, and he was getting a lot of hit ups about training people that they have been in the military. Myself, I was getting a lot of training requests after being in the military. And we noticed a lot of people were struggling to find trainers, even though. A lot of you know it's not too hard to find them, but you had a lot of people out there struggling, at least for certain categories. So that's when we came about our gym buddy, the fitness directory with different categories that people could go, whether they're in their hometown traveling and still find a trainer just to fit the needs that they're looking for. All right, I, I need to jump in here. Did I hear you were going for pro wrestling? You did, you did. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually still pursuing it. Um, it's just on the back burner right now while I push this because I believe that this company really can change lives because America has a really bad obesity problem, um, it's especially the state that I'm from. Uh, whenever I go back to Michigan, I see it everywhere. And then even when I do go to a gym, I see that people don't really know what they're doing. And I can only do so much and can only be in so many places. So with this platform, I feel like like people will be a lot more comfortable in hiring trainers and helping them out with, with getting a healthier lifestyle. Like it's it it's to me, health isn't about being like like the biggest strong strongest person. It's, it's it's just you being at a healthy state to where you feel good, where you get up in the morning and you have that energy. When you, when you go to sleep and then like you you feel like you accomplished something. In, in the day so that that so that's why i'm like stopping on one dream my ch- childhood dream in order to like like work on this to like like because my i guess my grown-up dream is to make an impact in the world that's gonna do it better that's awesome man i met mankind once <laughs> that guy is big <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he's actually one of the greats just because he can throw so many different personalities. In, uh, yeah, awesome, awesome guy. And you're at Lockheed Martin. Are you still doing that now? Uh, no, so I quit Lockheed Martin. Just, a, wow. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, as a Sucan's financial analyst, uh, and I quit Lockheed Martin just to pursue this and keep growing with this. Also help the community and help trainers who don't know how to market themselves get out there to help the community. Well, two, well, one statement, then a question. So statement, thank you for guys for serving. I think it's the most underappreciated people do the military. You guys, we owe you everything. So thank you for that. No and why did you join the military? What was the passion to do that? I know you mentioned Fort Drum, and I'm sitting here laughing in my head because I went to school in Oswego. So all the guys from Fort Drum would come out to us and go out drinking with us. Yeah, because they just wanted to get the heck out of there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, sure. So so me, I was scared of heights, but I went to airborne school to get out of Fort Drum just because I don't like the cold. Just for for that same same reason, I I heard that Fort Drum was miserable. No, you have no idea. <laughs> Windy, yeah. forty mile per hour winds every day. Always like the one time class got canceled, it was because it was negative twenty outside, not because of the snow. So it was, I don't know how they lived up on the Ford over there. We're lucky we had dorms at least. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no. Nope. Uh, and they try to sell us about that college too. Oh, yeah, there's a nice college near nearby and whatnot. Nah, but now hearing it from you, I'm glad I made the, the choice that, that I did. But no, um, yeah. I actually, um, I decided to join the military just because I, I wanted to get out of my city. Um I was a misguided kid, so like I, I really didn't know where I was going. I had three jobs at one point in time, just in pursuit of money, which is terrible. Like I, I will never pursue money ever again. Like happiness is the way to go. Um, but yeah, no. So I was working three jobs. I was working at a uh, Lowe's. I was working at a hotel, and then I was working um, in a grocery store in the meat department. Wow. And yeah, I was just sleeping on breaks, and then I, I I would eat when I was jogging from one job to another. I was 18, 19 years old, so, I mean, you know, at that age, you can afford to do all that. Um, but, yeah, now, uh, uh, no way will I do that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so the Army, honestly, my uh, stepdad would always tell me about it. He said it, it would instill discipline in me, and I would really like it. He tried to sell me, like, on the bonuses and, like, the free schools, but – I had already dropped out of college at that point in time. I really didn't care about college. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know, like one day it, it just came to my head and then like, I was just like, I think I'm gonna go join the army. And then I went to go see the recruiter and then I, I signed up. He was like, did you tell your mom or dad? I was like, for what? I was like, I'm going to the army. Like, I don't like, if I tell them they're, they're gonna say no. So let me just sign this paperwork and then let me go on my way. So. Yeah, I, I signed up and I, I will never regret that that choice, honestly. I think that is like the moment when, I'm not gonna say I became a man, but like it was definitely towards the like the right direction. Cause before then I was always doing things for other people. Like I went to college to make my mom proud and happy and like my family proud and happy. Um, yeah, I, was, I, just, I just decided to live life for myself. And I mean, it's worked out. I got to meet him, and then like I got to meet a bunch of other cool friends in the military. Um, I can pretty much go to like any state and be able to stay at a friend's house. I can go overseas and stay at a friend's house. Like the networking is amazing in the military, and then like the knowledge that you take with it as well into the outside world. It's weird to call it the outside world, but when you're in the military, like like it is two different worlds. Um, but yeah, but no, so. Yeah, so the skills that, that the military teaches you, they they really do apply. And uh, like I said, I will never regret that choice. And I signed up, honestly, to better myself and because I wanted to get out of my city. I want you to realize that there's two really good points you made. I, I don't even know if you realized how impactful they are. The first one you said was you're afraid of heights and then became a paratrooper. Yeah, <laughs> that's step one, man. Conquering your fears, just jumping oh, yeah. head first into something <laughs> that's got to resonate with people. Like, you're afraid of, and you're literally jumping thousands of feet above free fall. And that's one way just to get over. I, I love that. I love that, man. Bravery <laughs> and aspiration. Love it, man. When I saw that, 
<laughs> yeah, it, it's awesome. And then you said you grew up going into the military and it, it taught you that life isn't about money. And I think a lot of people have that misnomer where they go get the steady nine to five jobs and they think that that's the way for happiness. But then 20 years later, they hate their lives. They're fighting with their family. Their the health is horrible and they're upset. But it's like you could have done something where you feel better about yourself. You're, you're happier. Who cares about the gadgets? If you don't make millions, who cares? You know, it's about being happy in your life. So I I really love those two points you really made. That's, that means a lot. And I really hope people take that take home message, but James, why tell us a little bit about your side of this. I I kind of sitting there quietly a little bit. (laughs) I'm the talker. So why did I join the military? Um, I'm not going to have as many cool points as Chris has. <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> when I joined the military, um, I was losing my passion for sports, high school sports. Um, I wasn't working. I was just the kid that didn't work in school. But, um, yeah, I was I was playing Call of Duty. <laughs> Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> the military is nothing like that, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, Modern Warfare 2, the best Call of Duty. And I was there, my friends, and I knew we knew we had to join some, like do something. Cause I knew I, I I knew I was gonna survive in college at the moment, so I was also all over the place. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to focus in college. Cause I wasn't really focusing in high school, so I knew if I just went on and party in college, it it wouldn't have worked out. So I, at the time, college dude, I was like, hey, let's join the military. I looked at my friend, I was like, let's join the military. He was like, let's do it. So join the military, start Call of Duty. I got to see war. I mean, it got cut short. I got hurt by RPG. See the Purple Hearts. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so that's pretty much why I joined. And like Chris, I didn't escape the cold. They sent me to Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, you went to Alaska? <laughs> you went to Alaska. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a Floridian in Alaska, so I ain't going to do it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to avoid that, but. Over my time with say I definitely learned a lot. I grew up, I calmed down with the college, became a finance major, started at Lockheed. So I definitely don't regret joining. Um, I don't regret the reason for joining because it still ended up being a good reason in the end. And from there, I got to meet Chris. I met some other great friends. And now I could go, just like here, we go anywhere in the world. We have kind of place to stay, friends to meet up with. Well, that's awesome. And then you guys took the networking, which you had done already, the military, and you went and started your own thing because of COVID. And I think that's another great point for both of you. You took something that was devastating and shut people's lives down for still at this point, we're talking almost a year later, and you started your own business. I want people to think about that for a second, right? COVID destroyed the economy. And these two said, let's start a business. That is amazing. <laughs> no, that that's true inspiration. And I, I love it. It's the same reason I started this podcast. COVID hit. My gym got shut down. So I said, Something. let's start a podcast. <laughs> so like here it. we are. <laughs> but I talk to us about, to, go for it. Yeah. I also want to throw in the fact that he completely dropped his life in Florida and I completely dropped my life in Tennessee and both moved here to Charlotte, North Carolina. Which is a like, Got you're just winning. You're just winning life right now. I don't know if you realize that. <laughs> Everything you're doing is just boom, 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 boom. Perfect. Like that's how yeah, like, you do it, home. man. Got to can't let life tackle you. Yeah, Pete. You can always, and I'm sure you both can agree with this. You can always find an excuse not to do something. Yeah, make <laughs> up to excuses every day, and then have to. Always <laughs> excuses. Love it. So let's talk about your business. Let's talk about how I can see how this plays a role in the community, which I really love. So our gym buddy is like a yellow books online for. Okay. So our gym buddy, which we learned. So between that COVID time frame, Chris yeah. and I taught ourselves how to code through YouTube. And from there, we went and created a site called our gym buddy, as you guys know, the fitness directory. And it's, based, it's a Yelp niche Pacific. 
So if somebody wants to go find a fitness trainer, let's say Zumba, yoga, boxing trainer, they could go to ourjumbuddy.com and they could see trainer profiles that connect to their social medias, their website platforms, wherever that trainer uses. And it's no money. You don't pay us to go find a trainer. You don't have to register to go find a trainer. You just can log on, go through their profiles, and then link directly to how you know they want you to communicate to them. Yeah, so pretty much um, how I like to explain to people as well, um, just because I use different wording, but it's it's like a central hub of fitness. So if you go like on a vacation or something like that and you still want to stay in shape, I know a lot of people don't really think about staying in shape while they're on vacation, but it's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind. So you go, uh, so say if you go like on a business trip, um, you go and you type like your zip code in or like the city that you're going to, and then a list of those trainers will populate in that area. Um, so then you get a, you get a, what's the word I'm looking for? Not pick, but uh, you get a, yeah, you get a browse and see like what type of trainer you might actually need, who's going to specialize in the type of training that you need before you actually go over there. So and then, so that way it cuts time off the consultation and stuff. Cause normally when you go see a trainer, you 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 go see him and then you're kind of like forced to pick that one trainer at that one gym that you go to. So this is gonna be able to be like, okay, cool. I'm gonna be around this area, I'm gonna pick this trainer. I I, I like the way that that trainer looks. So um we're a very superficial society. So I mean we go based off looks. The law of attraction is real. So I mean, so you pick that trainer or whatever. You go and then uh, you can email them, get the consultation, let them know how how you've been training. And then that trainer will be like, cool, yeah, I can definitely hook you up um, whenever you're in town. We'll meet up at this time. And then, boom, you just save all that time looking for a gym, looking for a trainer, the consultation. You did it all before you even got to that city or state. Um, and it also saves you time in your own hometown or city. And the trainers can register for free online, along with the coupons and deals page. So you got a store, you got coupons, you can also post email us, we'll post your coupons on the directory. And then also the trainers could be self-employed or work for a gym. So they can either be bringing traction to the gym or if they're self-employed, bring traction to their own. I love that. That's so, it's a very interesting unique concept. And the vacation thing I think is something that's not really untapped where I'm thinking, I was putting examples in my head. I'm going away to Florida, let's say, whatever. And I show up to the hotel and this gym that they have is one treadmill, maybe an elliptical from Lucky and one five pound weight. Yeah, and, right. <laughs> That's I mean, as a trainer, I can make that work. But if I'm my client, I'm looking to like, well, not working out this trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe on the treadmill for like 10 minutes and then calling it a day. Yeah, because you know you're not going to work out in your room. Uh, it's no, I'm going to go find a margarita. That's some bartenders brewing up right now and say, I'm done. It's like 10 minutes. <laughs> so I love the way you facilitate. So I'm going to ask some questions because we get a lot of fitness people who listen to this. And then we get the other half is people who never worked out a day before in their lives. So yeah. I'm going to talk about this from both ends. And I want to start with the professional side of it from the trainer side, because that's where my expertise is going to come in. So when you're looking up a trainer, you're looking up a location, are you showing just pictures or are you showing certifications? Are you doing um, rating scales? Like what's as a consumer, if I'm going on, what's going to entice that person to find me as a trainer through our gym buddy? You want me to go? You got me? me? Right. So uh, ourgymbuddy.com is to pick a trainer. I'll go first. We have um, star rating. You have testimonials. It's also a description block that the trainers can fill out, listing all their services, qualifications, and anything they feel they would like to present themselves. You can upload pictures, videos, and also I say they, you can also link your Twitters, your Instagrams, your personal platforms. So when the trainer looks at, uh, when the client looks at profile, they have access to all basically everything. To do as much research as they feel they need to do of all the platforms or services that you offer for them just to scale and search through. Love it. And then from the client side, I'm somebody who's never worked out a day before my life and I'm trying to get into fitness. Are you guys doing, is it just a directory or are you giving 
that client resources, let's say tips and tricks of how to work out, how to start moving? What advice do you guys personally have for people? So we actually have blogs on our website, like what you should bring to uh, to the gym, um, what a good relationship, like what a trainer and a client relationship should look like. Um, and it's written from from a trainer. Uh, but yes, uh, so we're constantly updating blogs or we're throwing in some new blogs. So that's like the free content in there. So people can like sit down and read and know what to expect when they're embarking on a fitness journey. Cause I, I mean, once you commit to living a fit lifestyle, it's completely different from like how a sedimentary person lives. Like you won't be on the couch for four or five hours watching TV and Netflix. You'll be more conscientious on what you eat. You, you won't just go to BK every single day and then like McDonald's for dinner or something like that. Like you, yeah. So like, yeah. So we have blogs that'll keep you on path, stay you in the right way. Um, our Instagram, we're constantly uh, motivating people to work out um, on our Facebook. We're actually just getting that started. We're actually trying to reach a thousand followers by Super Bowl Sunday. Hopefully that happens, but we're sitting at like, what was it? Like 731 right now? Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So we're constantly promoting ways for people to work out to go check out the website. So um, we're doing the marketing for trainers, so people can go there and then find the the trainers. And then the trainers uh, for them to post the ads. That that's the only thing that we do charge. Um, but it's completely up to the trainers to sell themselves. Like it, it's not on us to sell like what the trainers can't can do or like. Um, their success rate. It's so they get rated obviously by the people that have used them in the past. So if people don't like how those trainers work, then they they get a low rating. And I mean that's honestly that's not going to be our fault. That that that's going to be on, on the trainer them, themselves. They they themselves need to get better. So our platform is going to hold trainers accountable as well. So what advice do you have for people to find a trainer? Uh, sorry to cut you off. Go ahead and continue your statement, but. What are, I'm looking at, give me advice as a client of what I should be looking for. But first I would so, so in there. find a trainer that is going to be able to, um, to satisfy your needs. Like if you just want to be like overall healthy, I wouldn't go for a powerlifting coach. Like it, it just doesn't make sense. Right. Like if you're training for a marathon, you, you, you wouldn't go to like a bodybuilder coach. So go find the niche specific trainer and that trainer will be able to help you out the most. Go look at their past uh, clients and and on what they specialize in, because not every, every trainer is going to be the right trainer for you. Every, every trainer has a different like type of style. There's no right way of fitness. There's no wrong. I mean, yes, there's wrong ways of fitness, but but there's no like one specific way to train or how to work out. You just have to find out what you like, what you think you would like, and try that out. Awesome. Jamie, you had a comment before. I want you to finish that. Go. Uh, he mentioned about Chinese Family Services. Right now, we offer a 30-day free trial and the 90-day coupon. If you just go on our social media and see the coupon, so everybody know. So that way you can try out the service before you start to have to pay for it. This is, uh, and it's $12.95 okay. after that a month. It's only $12.95. Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> For you, yeah, yeah we're doing all the you can say advertise yourself, but we're spending way more than that advertising for you. So. I, I love I love it, but I want to continue on this uh advice for help finding share. We'll make that kind of the drive home point of this before we wrap up. But so as a client, I'm hopping out, I'm trying to find somebody, I'm looking for specific mm -hmm. niches. As a client, should I hop into something that's more like an orange theory style? Should I hop into more of a CrossFit? Should I hop into uh, functional training. How do I know what would be best suited for me? Any advice you can give on that? So um, I go first. Um, I I say I guess if you're someone who likes activity, dance, and want to train without feel like you're training, I probably suggest Zumba. We have Zumba category, something that's more you're training, but necessarily isn't in the gym training or. You know, it could be a way for you to get in shape to work your way up and get the win before you maybe want to hit up a personal trainer and start lifting the weights and going that heavy. Wow. Yeah. That's what I said. So for me in the past, most clients already have an idea 
of what they want to do, whether they want to lose weight or if they just want to be faster or if they want to build some more muscle. So um, like I said, um, find that niche specific trainer uh, that is closest to what your thought process is on what you want your body to look like or what you're willing to put yourself through. And like, make sure that you're going to be 100% committed, even if it's just that one day. Um, I would also go tell them to go try out different type of workouts because, I mean, what they think they like and know might not be what they actually like. They might like, so say somebody's been doing Zumba, they're, they're, they're like, they really haven't gotten too many results. Um, and then they try boxing and now they love boxing. Like that, I wouldn't put a cap on any one specific category because I myself, um, I like to go running. Um, I'm not training for a marathon, but I do like to go running. Um, I like to lift weights. I like to do boxing. I like to grapple as well. Um, it, there's just so much in fitness. Like all I can really tell you is just go and try every type of fitness. <laughs> like, I mean, you're not gonna tell somebody to just go eat pizza, right? Because p- pizza is amazing, but like you can't. Just tell them. <laughs> it's the only food you need for the rest of your life. Like, no, you need to try different things. Just let them know it's free for you to look and try to look for different things. Yeah. So just ask, ask the trainer for a free <laughs> consultation on how it's gonna be. I love that. It gives a lot of definitely good inside information and it's, it's definitely something people need to do more of. If the pandemic taught us anything, it was the obesity rate during this has shot up higher than ever before, which is insane. I was obese during the pandemic. I was eating two pans of brownies a day. I'm not gonna what? Lie. Two pans of brownies? <laughs> and that's not including the food I ate. Like. Yeah. <laughs> oh I my gosh. Eat. Although I'm gonna tell you, I was in the I was probably the only American that was in the best shape of my life because I didn't have to work and I owned my own gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, not, not me. <laughs> your, your dad loved me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, guys. And thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Health and Fitness Redefined. Don't forget, subscribe to our show and join us next week as we dive deeper into this ever-changing field. And remember. Fitness is a journey, not a destination. Thank you guys for coming on. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for having us on here. Loved it.